Hey guys, welcome to the Joomla Shack conference. I really appreciate you uh, coming to this session. I'm Steve Burge, and I'm going to be your host for this event. I'm delighted to welcome Robbie Adair to talk to us about Fabric. Robbie has been a good friend of mine for years. She's been heavily involved in the Joomla community, including organizing the Joomla Day in Texas over several years. She runs Fabric, which she's going to be talking about today, and we've partnered with her on several projects too. Robbie, I'm delighted you're able to join us. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for uh, having me on here. It's uh, really cool, this online uh, conference. I love the I love this type of format. So thank you so much for having me involved. I, I was just listening to George's. I was like, oh, I now I have to follow that. Great. <laughs> he did a great job. So today, what we're going to talk about, though, and I will try to be as concise as possible because I am notorious for running over, but I will be concise because I know for a lot of people, it's very late. Um, we're going to talk about visualizing data with Fabric today. Obviously, with this, I'm kind of making some assumptions that you know what Fabric is, and but we will, if there are questions about that, I can answer those. But we're talking about a very specific thing inside of Fabric. So just a quick little bit about me. I mean, Steve, Steve probably told you plenty, but uh, I do a lot of speaking. I've had a business in Houston for 17 years. We're an agency. We build we build things uh, with fabric primarily. And then uh, Steve and I've just started uh, working together on OS training and that has been a blast. I've actually taught classes with them for 10 years now. So it's been, it's been fantastic. And I'm one of the co-organizers of the Houston Joomla user group. And then as uh, Steve mentioned, I do the Joomla Day Texas now and I see I haven't updated my slide. We actually call it Joomla Day Texas now. We just had our sixth annual event uh, and it was, it was very nice. We had it in Austin. It was a, it was a very nice event. So what we're going to talk about in here is, you know, kind of what are visualizations, in case you're new to Fabric, um, what they are, and then also what you need if you want to kind of replicate the things I'm going to show in here. Um, and then we're going to look at how you set these things up and then how we're going to put them all together. We're going to mesh them together to, to make a dashboard uh, because that's, it's been a big request in the last, I would say, year that it's we've done a ton of dashboards lately uh, with fabric visualizations and so I thought I'd go ahead and share how to, to put that together yourself and then obviously time permitting we'll do questions and I can't see the chat Steve can so Steve if you need to break in at any point go right ahead what you're going to need to do what I'm doing in here today is one, obviously Joomla and Fabric, but you'll also need the Fusion Charts library, which I will, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into actually looking at the Fusion Charts visualization. Um, and you also would need to have access to your database. Some of the visualizations I'm going to show you in here, you don't need that. Um, you don't need access to your database. It's all going to be WYSIWYG, as it were. But some of the things that you might want to do with Fusion Charts may require you building a view, and so you would need access to your database. So those are the things that you'll need. So what we're going to be looking at, like I said, there's, there's lots of parts to Fabric, but the part that we're going to look at in here today is visualizations, the part that's highlighted there with the, the red box, which is basically just another way for us to display data, usually visual, okay? Because we can do lists um, or details views um, out of the box with Fabric, but you can also do graphic views, and that's what we're going to look at in here. When you want to, when you build one of these visualizations in Fabric, to show that visualization, you have two methods. One, you can actually directly make a menu item. It's, it's actually one of the Fabric menu item types. So you can directly point to it. We'll look at doing that. Or the other thing you can do is you can actually use a short code, the Fabric view equals visualization, ID equals whichever visualization you want to show. And you can put that into an article or a module as long as you can prepare content. Um, so you can put it into things that will allow the Joomla prepare content. So, I told you I wouldn't have many slides because we don't want to stay in PowerPoint so, or Keynote. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of these. And so I'm going to actually switch my share now so that we can look at our browser. There we go. So I've, what I've done for our demo in here is basically I've just set up a little basic site for us to see. I have installed, just so you know what has been installed, uh, JCE, as well as Gantry is the template that I'm using in here. And so you'll see that uh, I just have the Helium template thrown in here so that we had something uh, with a little bit more color to it. Um, 
And then in the back end, well, let me just say that I have also loaded in the uh, library through FTP. And there are instructions on how to do that inside of the, the visualization for it. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. So, well, let's get logged back in. Timed out. Listening to George. <laughs> okay. So I have some lists in here. Now, the very first list that you see here, let me ID these this way, is actually my hardcore data. Now, this data is all fabricated. It is not real data. I used, um, I just used a, a generator to generate some data. If we look at that data, you'll see there's made up company names, first and last name. We have some things that we wanted to, to key off of, like, are they an active member? Or do they have their membership pays due, dues paid? If we look at a full uh, one, we have a lot more stuff, gender, favorite color, how frequently they visit the website. So we've just got some canned data that we put in here. Again, this is all fake. Nothing is real that we're looking at here. As well as we've put in the geocodes so we can map it out using the Fabric uh, Google Map element. So this is, this is using Google Maps. And there was a question about Google Maps before. And if we're going to also add the option for open street and it is a possibility in the near future. Um, so this is using Google Maps though. Now, if we go back up here, we actually have some other lists. These lists are generated views and you can see the name of the table. We actually usually put a, uh, an underbar view at the end so that we can, by looking at the database, tell if it's a table or a view table. So um, these were generated because we wanted to create some numbers in there to be able to plot out. But if we wanted to just simply look at our list, you saw that, I can look at this list. I can actually go and look at a single detail on this list if I want to. I can do that from the front end as well. But if I want to just say, you know, hey, when do all of these renewals happen on here? And I want to see it in a visual way. I can do that. So if we go here and we're looking at our visualization. So I'm in fabric visualizations. And you'll see this very first one is called renewal calendar. And there are types over here. This one is using the full calendar library. This one uses Google Maps. And the rest of these we're going to look at are fusion charts. So the very first one we're going to look at is a renewal calendar. Now, it is built in here where we select which plugin we're looking for. And there are other plugins in here uh, that I didn't show. Uh, actually, there's only one plugin I think in here that I didn't really show, and that is the slideshow, which just simply does what it says. It creates a slideshow from images. Um, these are a little more complex and interesting, so this is what I'm showing you guys. So with a full calendar, I just come down here and I say, look, I'm looking at the table members, which we saw before, number one list. I'm looking at the, the members, and I want to look at the start date. Now, this, remember, is for a calendar, so you have a start and an end date. But what we're doing doesn't need a start and end, so we only need our renewal date in here. You can set what color you would like this to show up, as well as you can put a where clause. So what I'm wanting to see is, when is the renewal date for all of our active members? Okay, so true on if they're an active member. And then we also can put pop-up templates on here, which we'll look at in just a second. You can also then simply add another condition you want to show on this calendar. So down here, you can see we're also looking at the same table, members. Um, we're looking at the renewal date. But this one is a false. This is not an active member. So this is a member who didn't renew on their last renewal date. But we still know when their renewal date is. So right here, we can see them with a different color. If we go to the home, oh, and by the way, let me get out of this. Let's close that real quickly. Then I simply went to my menu, and I made a menu item, not the map. Let me go back. <laughs> renewal calendar. I made this uh, link to my renewal calendar. You can see that the menu type is a visualization, and then you just select which visualization it is you want to display on this. So now we'll go to our front end so we can actually see something cool. And we'll see there's our renewal calendar. And you can see it's plotted our data. By the way, I didn't say that the mock data had a 1,000 entries in it. So we have a lot of entries in here, obviously. So we've kind of filled it up so you can go through the calendar and see it. This does use the full calendar uh, library set. So you can go into a week view. You can go into a day view. So you can go into different views there if you want, cycle through your months. Um, I actually have this where people could actually add from here, which we don't want them to do in this case. But um, so you can, but you can if you want to give people with certain access levels the ability to add to the calendar. 
from the front end. So, and then we have a key down here. We could have actually written these keys a little better so that they explain which is active member and which is not. Um, but this is our calendar view. Now, if we wanted to, instead of, uh, let's just say, seeing all these renewal dates on this calendar, we say, you know, where are all of our members out there? We want to see them plotted on a map. So same type of thing. We're going to go into, whoops, that's our menu item. Let's go back over here to our visits again. So in our visualization, you'll see we have map of members, and it is a type Google Maps. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to say map my members. And down here again, this is where we pick the type of visualization we're making. I do want to point out now that we've seen two of them. As I change here which visualization I'm going to use, my parameters, my options down here change. I have different tabs according to the type of visualization I am looking for. So for instance, this one is a map, so we've got a lot of Google Map options down here. First of all, we're going to say what we're wanting. We want to go and we want to pick our members list. We also are going to have a pop-up on our pins on our map, and so we can actually put what we want in there, and we'll, we'll look at that in just a minute when we actually look at it on the front end, we'll come back and analyze how we did that. We can set our, if we, even if we're going to do polylines, so if you have uh, an outline you're going to bring in here and scan over it, you can do that. Uh, we have, like I said, a ton of options on our map uh, visualization, as well as you can even talk about what type of map you want, how wide you want it. So now let's go over here and let's just take a little look at our, our map. One thing to point out here, we were kind of having that discussion earlier about Google Maps, and that is you do have to have an API to use Google Maps. And really quickly, I'll pop out of here. When you're in Fabric, if you go to the Fabric options, this is where you'll need to put your Google Maps API. So you'll need to get an API. And as we know, it is a little bit complex to go to Google now and get your map APIs. Um, but we do utilize several of the map APIs, the geocoding, the reverse geocoding, the static map, the directions, and the measurements. So we, we actually utilize several of those depending on what you're going to do inside of Fabric. So you might, you might need to enable more things than just the JavaScript geocoding. But that's by far the, probably the most used that you're going to have. So if we look at this map, one, we're in just a regular map view, but we do have where you can turn on a lot of different options. So if we look at our options, we can say, hey, we want this to be a satellite instead, or let's do hybrid. I like hybrid. So if I change the, my visualization, it's going to change the map type that I have going on here. So you'll notice also that I can switch back and forth if I want to here. I can go full screen. I can zoom in and out. I do have clustering on, so we support clustering, which means these little uh, circles that are showing me as I get over 10, they're turned yellow. If they're, you know, uh, zero to nine, they're blue. Uh, these are single one-ups. They don't have something very close to them. But let's zoom on in. If we click on a cluster, it pops up into that area, it zooms in. So if we look at this, we click on it, we can see here's the name of the person, our member, the company they work for, and their address. So now, how do we do that? We also did that in our visualization. Right down here, you'll see we have a bubble template. And so in the bubble template, you can call in, and I hope this is easy to see, because I do know this is just a, a text, so it's normal size text, but basically you can put in whatever HTML you want. These are the keys you need to see. When you're pulling in these variables for Fabric, you're going to use curly brackets. You're going to call it by the table name and then three underscores and the field name. So I've got FAB members at first name, FAB members last name. And I've wrapped a strong around it, made my font size larger. Then I bring in my company. So I've got FAB members company. Again, I've made it a little large, but not bold. And then down here, I've got my address, my city, state, and zip code. 
So I have all this written in. Now I will point out if somebody does not have one of these, it, uh, I haven't written any loops or anything there to check to see and to show, don't show this if it's not there. So if somebody didn't have their city and state, I might have a comma dangling out there, but you can actually write some code in there to, to skip over that if you don't have it. So you can check for that. But this is just something so we can simply look at what we can do inside of this little pop-up template here. So we can also, let's go over here to our options. We can also set where we want our zoom level or we can fit into bounds, which means I want to see all of them. We can also go down here and we can center the map by either the, mental, the middle, which is actually looking at all points that I've plotted on the map, and it puts the middle in the middle of my map space there. The other thing I can do is I can save where was the last marker they were looking at, or we can also do a user's location, which obviously does require them to say yes when the browser prompts them to ask for their location, um, or we can put in a special query string if we want to. So we also can change our defaults on our lats and long. We can go and we can set our map width and our height. Width can be in percentages, but your height must be in pixels. You can also even set up, if you want to, you can set up custom templates on this as well. So if you have other things you're wanting to wrap around the map, things like that, you can do a custom template and apply it to the visualization. Our controls. Do we want them to be able to zoom or not? Sometimes you actually don't want people to be able to zoom in. You've got a map set this way. I want it. I don't want them to zoom. But by default, it, is, it does let you zoom in. Do you want your controls small or large? That kind of depends on the size of the map, what you can handle on it. Mouse scrolling, by default, we turn this off. But that means if I wanted to make it so that when I scroll my mouse on top of this, I zoom in and out, we can do that. We turned it off by default just because it is more difficult on mobile when you do that. And when people are trying to scroll down your screen, if you've gone 100% with your map, they hit the map and they start just zooming in and out of the map. So I do suggest for accessibility that we don't, but there may be calls for it. Scale control as well. Do we want to allow them to do this? Um, do we want them to be able to switch their map types? So you can see I've got that on yes. So they can actually, if they want to, they can switch over different types of maps as well as do we want them to have um, street view, which I think is really cool. I like street view, I use it myself. And so we can actually turn on street view here too. So if I say, hey, I'm looking for one of my members uh, and I can say, okay, let me, let me zoom in there a little more so we can go and visit. And then we can drop our little guy down there and say, hey, let's just go meet Nail. And so we can see our street view and our street view is being very slow right this moment and maybe because I'm sharing a screen, but the street view, view does work. <laughs> I'm going to go out of that. It's gonna, I don't want to lock up my screen share here, but you can turn on street view as well as you can turn on uh, directions as well. So I want to be directions from where I am to there. Um, let's see some other cool things. The map is one of our most popular. So I, I want to kind of show you guys some of the cool things that you can do. Traffic layers, heat maps, all of these come from Google, but you can put those on there as well. Um, and then the refreshing. So do you want, by, by default, we don't have Ajax refreshing on, but you can turn it on, which just means basically you saw how when I was making some big changes there, it would refresh the page entirely. We can make it so that it just refreshes inside of the map with Ajax if you want to. Um, clustering, this is where you turn on clustering, and you can actually change the sizing and the max, the max zoom levels in here as well. Your advanced is going to be if you want to set an, a set number of markers that you won't go past. In case you have something that has a million entries in it, that may be something that you don't want to actually try to uh, visualize because it may, your system just may not be able to handle that. And so you can mark it down. Do you want to use cookies or not? Cookies is how we remember where they were, where they zoomed in last. And so we can go back to where that is. Um, we turned off cookies by default it is on. We turned it off for the presentation though so that if I made changes, we could see them easily without me having to go clear cookies or anything. So we turned it off. And we can also use a radius if we want to in there for searching. And then if you have overlays, you can put those in here as well as well as sidebars in there, but we won't look at those. And then these are, if you're using overlays that you're gonna pull in and overlay on your, your Google map, you will need to put in where that is. 
And then again, we just made a menu that pointed to this map, which is what we're looking at right here. Okay, so that's our map visualization. Now we're going to look at some of the newer ones. And, and one of the questions that we had earlier was also about updates on Fabric. Just to let you guys know, we haven't put out a, a new points uh, version of what we've got going on, but our GitHub has a lot of updates in it, including these visualizations that are built with Fusion charts. And so you can actually download this now and use this code already. It is there, as well as and a key into what George was talking about, the Joomla 4 alphas. We've been working on Fabric for keeping it up with the alphas as best we can. We're probably two points behind right now, but we've been working on that so that we'll be prepared as well next year. So this is an example of a fusion chart, and there are a ton of fusion charts. Let's go in the back end here, though, and let's take a little look at this visualization. When we set up a fusion chart visualization, I want to point out in case the big text didn't, doesn't get your attention, it's very big, but if it doesn't get your attention, it does point out to you, you cannot use this visualization until you go and get their library. Used to, we could put it with our visualization, but they've changed their licensing, so you cannot include it, but you can go get it. It's still free. There are versions. There's a free version of Fusion Charts or a paid version. Our visualization works with both, but this is, if you want to put in these visualizations or use these visualizations, you'll need to click on this link, which will take you to Fusion Charts, where they're going to send you some emails, but you can download and you can get a free version of Fusion Charts. And if you, you know, so that way you can test it out. Some people never go off of the free version because it's small. Maybe they're like this, a small little membership organization, and they don't really care if it says Fusion Charts. You can see right here that if it's a free version, it does have a link back to Fusion Charts because it's a trial version, but it still works. Everything, there's nothing in the free trial that, I mean, nothing in the pro that's not in your free trial. It just has their marketing back. So you will need to come and get this. You need the JavaScript, JavaScript libraries. And we even have in here, if you read on the large text, we do tell you where you need to install them. So we give you the exact directions of what you need to go get and where you need to put it. Once you have that in place, you're good to start building one of these uh, visualizations. Now, we want to go in here and we want to say, which list are we connecting to, just like we did on the others. In this instance, we're actually connecting to one of the views. And so we wanted to do a view where we were aggregating the data into one view because sometimes we want, to, uh, we want to actually do calculations, like we want to add up some things or whatever. So that's why we did a view. You may or may not need a view to accomplish your chart, though. So that is, it's, that's why I said you may need access to your database. You may not. It depends on what you are trying to show, whether or not you're going to have to create a special view for it. Okay. So in this instance, though, we're going to show the web visit frequency as well as, let me skip over here, and, and then we have an element on that view that's called totals, so we totaled them up. The next one, though, graph attributes. This is an important one. This is very important because, one, this sets which library I'm using, okay, and then also this sets the chart type. So, for instance, we're looking at this pie chart right here. If I wanted to, I could switch this pie chart to be three-dimensional, let's say, and so I can go to a 3D pie chart, and so you now I've got a 3D chart out of this. Now, with that being said, I will tell you that there are a ton of fusion charts. Um, I forgot how many exactly they have, and I mean, they're adding all the time, so it, me giving you a number really doesn't mean anything. But you can see we've got quite a few now in our plugin, but we don't have all of them, but we do have a lot of them. So we do have a lot of their charts already converted over into here. So all you have to do is select the, the one you want. Once you select the one you want, I'm going to go back to the 2D. Um, you have some other things that you can do. You can go in, in here and pick a theme color if you want. Um, you can, um, let's see, we'll go through here and like some of these things that I did. I went in and put a caption that I wanted because I wanted to have a really small little name above it as opposed to having to have a, a module name or, a, or going and putting in something inside of this chart. In this instance, the way I'm doing it, I probably would have shown instead uh, the, the regular page title on this one, but since we're just trying to focus on this, um, I wanted to break it down so I could do a dashboard for you. So we stripped off the regular title and we just showed a smaller caption title on there. 
The other thing we can do is with fusion charts is there's mapping graphs. So let's take a look at this one. Um, I, I like this one a lot. Uh, this one is going to take our members by state and tell us how many they have in each state. So like if I hover over any of those, New Mexico has 12, Texas has 119, California has 107. So as I hover over these, Florida 100, I can see how many. The cool thing about this to me from, a, from a, both a marketing standpoint or as just a running a business standpoint, let's say this really is our organization. These are our members truly. And we look at this and we say, wow, we have a lot of states that are less than, I drag this and I say, let's see how many states we have that are less than 10 members. Guess where I need to be marketing probably. I need to push towards these states and see if I can get more members there. Or we say, hey, it's coming up time. We're going to do our annual convention and we want all, you know, we want a lot of members to show up. So let's go and look and let's see, you know, where are, you know, where are the most members that we have? Well, these states. So I'm probably going to do my annual conference in one of these states where I know I have the most members. So visualizing data is very powerful for marketing, for running a business, everything. It's great. I mean, could we have done the same thing? by pulling all that data into Excel, doing totals. Yeah, we could have, but this is, in my opinion, it's faster and it's very powerful to see the visual of this. Um, I will point out to you, it's kind of a interesting thing that Fusion Charts does. Uh, we, we haven't looked to see if you could change the way it does, but you'll notice these three states up here remained, and that's because those states had zero people in them. And so it's basically the data sets don't exist. So it just color codes them whatever color that's set to, and it doesn't do anything whenever we're, we're expanding and seeing the different states. So just kind of interesting the way that that chart did. That this, is, this is pretty much default. We did change just the, the coloring of it. Otherwise, we, we try to kind of stay true to the defaults of the fusion charts and not do anything crazy with coding. Um, so, so these are pretty uh, basic to that. All right. So let's go take a look at another one here. And we'll look at it on the front end here. So we've got our renewal calendar. We looked at our web visits, our members by states. And then we've got our renewals here which is just going to be a, a bar chart. Again, if I wanted to, I could change this chart type. Um, and you could pretty much switch between, there's kind of groups of uh, charts that use the same type of data, and you can switch between any of those in the plugin to visualize this a little bit differently depending on what your needs are. Maybe I want, instead of side by side, I want this to be a, um, a stacked bar instead. You can do that just switching the, the type in the back. Um, you can also have your keys down here as well. And the keys are interactive. So if I just want to see, I just want to see unpaid people or I want to see paid people, I can do that. As you hover over them, we get information here. So they're just kind of slick little charts, in my opinion. Um, and then there's one we want, definitely wanted to show people just because we've had uh, a, lot, a lot of clients that will have huge data sets. So they've got just a lot of information. So like, for instance, this chart, chart that we're looking at right now, we're plotting out on a line. But if you, and I know this is going to be really hard to see on here, but basically I'm going to read to you. We've got, this is 11, 11, 7, 19. This is 11, 22, 19. This is 12, 5. So you're like, wait, I'm skipping numbers. Skipping numbers because there's actually 350 points on this chart. But 350 points I mean, we would just not even be able to read this chart, right? It would just be crazy. And we just recently had someone who had the similar type chart that had 4,000 points on it. Well, you just can't plot that out and be able to visual, I mean, be able to see it. But with the zoomable one, Fusion Charts has a really cool little feature where I can say, well, I just want to focus in on this area. So I'm just dragging and highlighting an area and then it zooms in and so you can see now I'm at 25 27 29 I'm still not as zoomed in as I could be so I can zoom in a little more if I want to as I zoom in now I'm at every day so now I'm actually seeing my my granular data there and you can see down here it is showing me where I how far I've zoomed in and I can slide and so that way I can kind of look at the rest of it if I'm wanting to do a day by day look there. So it's just kind of a, a cool little feature that they have in there. And we can go back out if we want to or we can just reset it. Just kind of a cool little thing that's baked in. Like I said, we just had need for it. So it's like, hey, let's just show this because it's kind of cool how you can show so many data points on there. Now we've looked at just a few, I should say, of the uh, fusion chart options. But and we've looked at mapping, we've looked at a calendar, and we've looked at fusion charts, different types of charts here. 
which is all great and all, but if I'm an exec or this is my business, I'm running it or whatever, that if I have to go and look at each one of these, it's, it's going to be cumbersome to go and do that. So what we do instead is we put those all together. Now, we do that by, depending on your template of choice, okay, like this one, I've done a gantry override and I've got a dashboard layout just to show you what I did. So it makes sense. And I've just put some module positions. So I've got different module positions in different areas here. And then I went to my modules and inside of my modules, I did things like, here's my bar chart. You can see it's assigned into dashboard bars position. So I put it into a position and then I put in my short code to say, hey, I want to show the fabric visualization here. So you can do this with a list. You can do this with a form. You can pull your fabric, uh, different types of fabric objects. But this one is a visualization. And then you have to give the ID number. That's the basic what you have to have right there in the short code. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, this is key, because if you don't do this, when you go and look at your page, you're going to see curly bracket fabric view. And you're going to be like, that didn't work. It didn't work at all. Well, you do have to go to your options and you need to use the Joomla prepare content. So you do need to go and tell it, hey, I need you to prepare this content in here. Okay, that's going to make it actually work. And now we'll go here to, all I did was I pointed a menu item to that gantry template, my override. And now what we're doing is we're pulling in all of those on one so we can create a cool little dashboard where people can see all of these in one place. And I don't know why my map is having a little issue there. Oh, I turned off the wrong map. Let me switch that back. Let's do that one and turn off that one. There we go. So we put all our fusion charts on one page here. So now I can, you know, have a little executive dashboard where I can see a lot of different uh, data. The one thing I do want to warn you against is you do have to be careful how many of these you pull on there. It will slow down a site depending on how much data we're trying to pull in, how many of these charts we're pulling in. Um, and when we see that kind of thing, what we usually do is we just figure out logical ways to split into dashboards. And so all of these things group together and they'll be on one dashboard. And all of these things make sense to be grouped together and we'll put those on a different dashboard. And by the way, this could have other things. It doesn't have to have just the fabric visualizations. We could also have a fabric list down here. We could have a fabric form down at the bottom if we wanted to. So you could pull in anything you wanted, plus you could pull in any other type of content that you wanted. Again, just being you know, wary of you don't want to have something that is too taxing just because you don't want to have a slow load on this dashboard. Um, so just test it out and see if you have to split it up into multiple dashboards or not. So you could have also, by the way, I showed you how to do it with a template, but you could have actually done this exact same thing if you prefer. You could have gone into an article and just coded, you know, you could have uh, used a CSS um, or HTML, broken it up just like this, pulled your fabric codes, short codes in there. So I could have actually done almost all of this in one uh, article. What I did right here, though, in this gantry is I put it in a different section because I wanted to have a different background color go full across. So something like that, you know, it made it easier to pull it as different modules. But you could have done this all in one article if you wanted to. We've done dashboards before where everything was pulled into one article and just, you know, used Bootstrap to lay it all out and, and you were done. But the thing I like about when we do it the way we just set it up here is... Now, if I want to, I can use my ACL. So let's say, for instance, on this dashboard, this is very important, but this is something that we only want the execs to see. Well, then we could set the ACL on this to whatever ACL you use for your executives. So maybe this is okay for other people to see. Maybe this is my marketing people, and I want them to see this and this. Well, then I can set these two to the ACL for my marketing people. So this same dashboard then becomes a multifunctional dashboard using Joomla's ACL. So that was another reason why I wanted to show you with modules and why we typically do prepare in modules. Um, just because if I did it inside of an article, now I'm gonna set the whole article's ACL or then I have to get you know snazzy with my code to set ACL in line. So um, I think it's just simpler to do this with modules as well as now I can move them around very quickly by just reordering my modules inside of sections. So it also makes it a little easier for you to um, organize and lay out, I feel like, when you do it with modules inside of your template versus just as in an article, pulling all of those in. 
So just to recap what we, we went over here, we, one, you had to have Joomla, you had to have fabric. Um, I also, one thing I did not mention um, is on my fabric install, I did also go and get the full GitHub, which you can go to GitHub and you can get our full version. So that way you have the latest Fusion Charts information. Uh, so I did do a GitHub update on this site as well as I also installed the, uh, with FTP, the Fusion Chart library. So that is key there. If you're going to point with a menu item, it's as simple as going and creating a menu item to a visualization. So if I go in here to fabric, you'll see there's a menu item to visualizations right here. Or if I wanted to do what we did for our dashboard, then I would go into here, into a module, and I would use the code, our little short code here to pull it. And most importantly, don't forget, go into your options and hit prepare content. Otherwise, you'll just be looking at the little code <laughs> and you'll be like, this, Robbie lied. It doesn't work, but it does. You need Joomla's prepare content. And then we just put these in modules to lay them out in there. In Fabric, where we set up our visualizations, was under Fabric, Visualizations. And if we wanted a new one, we would just simply go in here and hit new and we would pick the type of visualization we wanted, connect it to whichever uh, table that we wanted to use for our data. And then we would put in some other things, key things that are required or things that we want to do, like putting in where clauses. Oh, and one thing, I'm glad I went in here to show you those, because one thing that I do want to point out, I, I did mention it briefly on the full calendar. You do need the start date that we looked at. So there is, you do have to have a date field, okay, and an element. And I'll show you in just a second, I'll go show you the element that we're keying off of here is date field type, which is renewal date. And then the other thing is for Google Maps visualization, your data has to have a geocode element. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to put the pins, right? Um, and so if we want to do this mapping element, we do have to have in our data that we pick, I picked this list, members, there is an element. You don't have to select it. It'll find it. So you don't have to worry about that. It will find your geocode, and it, that's how it plots them on the map. And I didn't even get it. There are so many things you can also do in here. If we wanted to, we could, we could do other uh, plots on the, on the map if we wanted to with different pen colors. You can also do custom pens as well if you want to do little custom graphics. So you can, you can do multiple things in there. So now let me just back out real quickly and just show you in those elements those two key things that you need. So for calendar, we must have a date. And so we'll see on here, renewal date, renewal date, where are you? Um, not on this one, not on this page. Let's go to the next page here. All right, here's our renewal date. And actually, because we imported this, I didn't make this a date field, but if you look at our data, it is in SQL date format, okay? We just imported the information in there, but it is in SQL date format. If you wanted to, if you were gonna be pushing your information in, entering it in from the front end, you would want to make it a date element, okay? And then this, the second thing for the mapping, if you're going to do mapping, let's go find our Google map on here, there it is. Um, what you will need to do is you will have to have one plugin that is the Google map that stores in it basically lat long and the zoom level for the map in a particular sequence, but that's what it does. Now, just to really quickly show you inside of this mapping element as well, um, you can set the zoom level in here that gets included with the lat long, okay? And in this instance, for my geocoding, I'm using the elements. So I said, hey, for use the elements to find the lat long. Go look at their address, go look at their city, go look at their state, their zip. And then you can either say, okay, when they do that, I'm gonna give them a button that says geocode or I'm gonna do it as they type. But you do need to capture this information to be able to do the big visualization that goes on Google Maps so that you have your lat longs for that. Okay, so that pretty much covers what I have to show you guys today. And now if there's any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Sure thing, Robbie. We do have quite a few questions. Uh, <laughs> let me start off with this one. Does Fabric have any way to integrate and visualize Google Analytics data? Is there a list of sources that Fabric can pull data from? 
so we do have our plugins in GitHub that you can see there are a lot of them. But even like in the visualization, here's what I'll tell you with that. Some of the visualizations are extremely old. Like there, we have a timeline visualization, <clears throat> but it's very old. And so it has to be updated if it's going to be used. It, it basically, if no one is asking for it, it doesn't happen. But um, as far as other Google products to answer that, we don't as of yet have anything that works with analytics, but not opposed to it. I mean, that would actually be a cool thing on our dashboards now that you mention it. So we don't have it as of yet, but we could build a plugin to do that for sure. I mean, the Google APIs, though they're sometimes complex to get your keys, <laughs> they're actually really cool to work with. So Okay. Um, where would someone go to get uh, all the different Fabric plugins? Can they go to GitHub or do they have to go to the Fabric website? Great, great question. Um, you can do both. So if you go to the Fabric website and you go to download Fabric inside of here, we actually have a little search. So like, for instance, one thing that I use all the time is the yes, no plugin. So you can just go over here and you can search. And so you can find what you're looking for. You can search by type or you can search by a name if you know what it is. I love the calc plug in as well. And so you just search for the ones you want. You have to sign up. You don't have to pay anything. It's free. It's all open source. You just have to sign up and then you can download it. Um, so, uh, and you know, we do have documentation. I know that some of our documentation is old. <laughs> it, this is, this is our open source site though. And so it is all open source. We do have some people in the community that do commit on those things. Um, uh, but we do know that because we have so many things, I think, at our last look at it, we have like 140 plugins, but we know a lot of those need to go away. Um, and so we will be looking at that. We There's a few things too that um, we were planning to work on that we kind of put on the sidelines for Fabric, I mean, uh, yeah, for Fabric 4 that works with Joomla 4. So for instance, one of the things that people are always asking for is packages. And so that is something we have on our roadmap, but it's, you know, not going to happen tomorrow, but it will happen because we need it as much as everybody else needs it. Um, but yes, you can go here and download or you can go to Fabric GitHub. If you go to GitHub, we have a couple of different packages. The one, the one you go directly to is just the regular Joomla 3X one. And this is going to have everything in it. So what I mean by that is you'll need to, when you do a manual update from GitHub, you'll need to go and discover and install the ones you want. Okay. So, and we have instructions on how to do, just look up how to do a manual Annual GitHub update on Fabric. We have it on our wiki and it walks you through the process. It's very simple. You're just going to FTP up some files. You're going to go and discover. You're going to install what you want. Okay. Next question. And questions are coming in thick and fast at the moment. Do you have any <laughs> way in Fabric to pull data from Joomla's custom fields? Yes, that's been in there for quite some time. Um, I think it was actually even in the release that went out, which is 3.9 something. Hang on one second. <laughs> I should know this. I should know what our uh, latest uh, release point number is in here. Well, we can go back here and look and see. Um, but it will be, it, it is there. It's already been there. So you can work with your um, custom fields inside of Joomla already. Just go here to manage and I'll get my point number here. I don't know why. I don't know that off the top of my head. It's 3.9. We don't have a point after it. That's right. We know we're, we're due a 3.9.1 and uh, we've been planning it for two months now. It just has not happened, but it will, especially now that we're coming into the holiday season, hopefully we'll have a little more time that we can actually get that rolled out to everyone. Uh, we just need to do a little more testing on some things because we made, um, We've made some cool changes here, and so uh, we need to just make sure that they're not going to break anybody's sites or that we can give them warning of what they have to change. Okay. Uh, one question. <laughs> what is the status on packages in Fabric? Okay, that was what I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, I just mentioned that a few minutes ago. We actually, so like I said, we we know everybody wants packages. Everybody wants, pa we want packages. Everybody wants packages. And so um, we were planning on doing it in our 3.9 series here, um, in the 3 series, I'll just call it. Um, but then we decided, once we started looking at uh, Fabric 4 and working with the alpha, with Joomla 4, we decided we would put, because we don't want to rewrite it this and then rewrite it there, right? And so we are going to do it for Joomla 4. With that being said, <laughs> we actually had someone who contact us, then they may absolutely need it and be willing to fund that project in 3. And so we may have it in 3. I don't want to promise that. I don't want to say it's coming, but... 
I would love it if it does too. And so that is something that we would like to do. Okay. And I think but it definitely is, will come with four. <laughs> and I think this is the last question here that we have. Do you have any way to visualize data that is coming externally, perhaps from a JSON API? That's a very good question. I'm trying to think if we've done that in something. Um, we have done things where we will pull in uh, data and build a, a build a table from a JSON and then visualize on that. Uh, but our our viz itself doesn't support pulling from a JSON. But we've done it with some other things, and so I'm just now that you say that, I'm just wondering if it's not something we should look at. It does not right now. That is the first answer. It does not right now. But not saying that it couldn't uh, do that because we have done some cool stuff with JSON into our list and our forms. So it is possible. Um, one thing I do want to point out, because this was something that came about because I told you, you have to do the views. Um, so we, it just became very cumbersome to always do a view. And so now we actually have in here where you can actually write custom queries directly in the Fusion chart. So you don't always have to go and build that view. You can just actually write a, a custom query if you want in there, but you do have to know what you're doing to write a custom query, right? So, um, but you know, so that did make it a little less cumbersome, but that doesn't answer your JSON question, I understand, but I just want to tell you that we are always, it, these, this Fusion Charts plugin has been getting tons of updates and changes in the last, I would say, six months. So, you know, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could. I mean, we do have PHP. You could write your own if you wanted to and pull it in there, but uh, it doesn't out of the box do that, though. I'll tell you what, let's sneak in one related final question. Uh, and that is external data again. Does Fabrique ever work with external MS SQL databases? Um, <laughs> funny, you should say that. Um, we don't directly tie. So we don't, uh, in our connections, if you go to Fabric connections, you could tie to as many MySQL ta databases out there as you want to. So I could tie to, if I wanted to also on this dashboard show, how many products do I have in my WooCommerce store? I could actually tie over to my WordPress database, grab my posts or, yes, posts, and then do my product. So I could go and I could just write a simple little filled pre-filter and I could show and then visualize as well all of the data that's on in my WooCommerce store if I wanted to or how many products I have and put that on my dashboard. So you could connect to other MySQL databases. Now, can you connect to other types of databases? No, not as of yet. You cannot try to connect to other databases but we have connected to multiple types, MS SQL, PIC systems, all kinds of stuff. The way we do it is we actually, on our list, we ha they have to have an API. And we just write a plugin to go to their API and grab their data. And we even can do, like, uh, we've done systems where they had, you know, like a big PIC system inside of their network. They didn't want to have their data out in a Joomla site. So basically, we just use the API. We go and we absorb it in. We show them stuff. We let them edit stuff. We send back stuff that we want. And then whenever we send back in our plugin, we blow away everything in the MySQL database that we don't want there and save the record. And so, you, you know, you can still communicate with a lot of different types of systems out there, but it does take APIs. And then you just build a simple little plug. Well, I shouldn't say simple. You build a plugin, however complex it is to connect to that API, right? To then pull into Fabric. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Robbie. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for putting this on, Steve. It's great. Oh, you're welcome. That was a great presentation. Thanks to all of you guys. I know some of you stuck with us all the way through today until the evening and asked questions and got involved and really helped out. I know this isn't the official Joomla World conference we were hoping for, but I, I think that we managed to create a little bit of community and value during the conference. And we have one more day tomorrow. Uh, same time, same place. We have nine more sessions tomorrow. Uh, thanks everyone for coming today and I hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you.